Hello everyone, welcome to Zareth Prevails, a Grand Arena story. The intent of this series is to show each of my Grand Arena matches, both win and loss, and to provide insight as to the decisions that I've made in each match. I'm a competitive player by nature, and the focus of this series is going to be on competitive play. Throughout this series, we're going to be talking about things like mods, strategies, which teams you should use on offense and defense, and different counters for different types of teams and specific teams. You can see here that this is the semifinals, which means I've already played one match. However, it wasn't much of a match. My opponent did not deploy on defense, and so I was able to beat most of his teams with understrength teams in order to gain the feat that they've assigned at the start of Grand Arena. Before any Grand Arena match, it's very important to look at the opposing team's stats. In this matchup, it looks like I have better mods in general. However, my opponent has more Zetas by about 10, and they have more gear. That means that they'll have potentially more teams available on offense to counter anything I put on defense. It's a good idea first to look at all teams available. It looks like they have a Darth Revan team here, but we want to see what other teams will be facing as well in order to get the best idea of what teams we need to use for different counters. The front line is kind of a mixed bag. The Darth Revan team and the Grievous team are both going to present some serious challenges, especially because Grievous has a lot of health. He, he has all the gear that he needs to make him very dangerous. And he, even though he's not gear 13 yet, nobody is uh, because Grand Arena locked before we had time to apply gear 13. Normally, I would want to beat their best team first. Their Darth Revan needs to be countered by my Darth Revan. However, Old Republic was staring there at me, and for some reason, I decided I wanted to try a new team with them. I really wanted to try a new matchup against the Old Republic team, because I didn't really have any set teams other than meta teams who could beat them. The theory is that Django's lead is going to suppress the potency of this team to be able to prevent them from applying damage over times, or DOTS. However, this was a little bit misguided in my theory crafting for one important reason. Candorous has Tenacity Down. Apparently, Tenacity Down makes it so that you can ignore your potency entirely. However, just because I miscalculated doesn't mean that I can't pull myself out of the fire, so to speak. When facing down Old Republic teams, I generally try to beat Karth first, just because he's so squishy. Now you see that Zalbar is passively taunting again, and Embo is a great resource to be able to help deal with that. You'll notice in this video that Embo at no point actually crits anyone, including Zalbar. You can see that Bosk already has 16 dots and is about to die. That's a really unfortunate and kind of unforeseen consequence to using this team against Karth. I hadn't been expecting damage over time to be in any way near as significant as they actually made it. To be honest, I hadn't expected those damage over times to be anywhere near as significant as they were. However, we did get the contract, which means all of the bounty hunters that who have bounty hunters resolve can ignore the taunt by Zalbar. That's obviously important because they were able to kill Mission, despite Juhani and Zalbar both taunting at the same time. Now, because there's only two tanks left, we can kind of kill them at our leisure. Now, you'll note that Embo at no point in this video actually gets a crit in, which is important. He does dispel on his basic, which is great. However, if he can get a crit on his basic, he can then toss his hat or do his other special and get a bunch of extra damage in, which he wasn't able to do consistently in this episode. Losing Boba there hurt. Even though the match really isn't in question, the fact that I'm going to lose banners for Boba as well does sting on my very first match and against Old Republic, who isn't really a meta team at all. 
still, it's great to get a win here. The fact that I entered this match under the false premise that I could block all of those dots and then I lost Bosk right away and was still able to pull it off is pretty big. We got 50 banners, would have preferred 60, but it's a heck of a lot better than only getting 30 and having to waste a second team on offense. I would name Bounty Hunters as an indifferent counter to Old Republic. Just because you can win sometimes doesn't mean you're always going to win. And the goal should always be to get a full clear with zero fails. I'm really excited to see the new Geonosian team in action. With the Alpha, with all the Zetas, their crazy resilience is going to be really frustrating to deal with in Grand Arena. No, this isn't that team at all. If I can get the first kill, which I did, you'll see that all of the troopers have a lot of turn meter. Now, if we can continue the kills, we'll be able to continue the turn meter train. And the only shots that the enemy is going to fire are counters from Sunfac that don't do much. Troopers heal them, their protection and their health for every kill that they make and every buff that they get. And getting 60 banners there feels good after the fiasco or near fiasco with Old Republic and Bounty Hunters. Bosk and First Order are great news for us because they're so common in Grand Arena that I have a ton of counters available for them. Before we take on a back zone, however, we need to clear the front zone first. This is kind of the moment of truth in the entire Grand Arena match. If my Darth Revan, who has faster mods, can beat his Darth Revan, I'm going to be in a good position. This is a great matchup for me in terms of relative mod speed. Darth Revan is faster than Dar their Darth Revan. My Badstila is faster than their Badstila. And really, nothing else matters that much. I generally try to get rid of HK first, if possible, just because of his potential for huge damage, especially against a Revan team who has no defense by virtue of all of those crazy awesome and really dangerous debuffs that they carry. Darth Revan mirror matches are extremely difficult to prescribe a certain kill order. There are functionally three different taunts for each team, which adds a lot of chaos. In addition, every single member is capable of some extreme damage that they can deal. It might sound irresponsible, but for these Darth Revan matches, I usually just wing it. 57 banners is wonderful for this matchup. Being able to end the battle with two characters at max protection is great, though I suppose one of those is Malak because he converts his protection into health. General Grievous is increasingly prevalent and worrisome in Grand Arena. He's another character who's capable of insane damage, and now that Gear 13 is here, he's really going to be a problem. For this match, I really like Treya and her squad. Magnaguard has his buff now with the Stealth Taunt, which is probably the strongest type of taunt in the game right now. He also has a 70% chance to counter, so we need to be able to neutralize him as quickly as possible. This entire team work functions really well together, which is why I'd like to take Treya along with Thrawn to be able to isolate one and fracture the other while we work on the rest of the roster. It's extremely important to get Isolate on B2 as fast as you can to prevent him from taking a turn every time your characters do damage to their team. Typically, with whatever team I use, I try to get B1 off the table as fast as I can. The amount of damage that he does through assists can truly be insane. B1 is currently on my top 10 list of characters to get to gear 13 which seems crazy because he doesn't have any health or protection, but the amount of damage and utility he gains by getting 13 is amazing. The droid team is really strong, and they all get a lot from their various gear 13 pieces. The Grievous squad is one of the most enjoyable teams in this game right now. Even to play against, it's amazing to watch. You have him slowly ramp up his damage as I kill the various droids he doesn't even care about. Watching Grievous casually destroy my back line is honestly just impressive. I'm not even mad. But as Nihilus gives Grievous something, 
the match comes to a screeching halt. Seeing B2 be such a non-factor in this match is honestly amazing. He can win entire matches just on his own, just because of all of his various things that he does for the team. He gives turn meter to the, all the rest of his droids, he causes ability block, and he debuffs everyone. He's honestly another reason why Treya is great for this matchup, because even though he causes ability block to people on a really crazy scale, Treya is able to just dispel it without it actually being a factor for her team. Magna Guard is so resilient now. It's so crazy. 52 banners? Honestly, I'll take it. Oh, and I got into Bronzium League, which is not that exciting, if we're being honest. What is exciting is being able to see what the final two teams in the back row are. With the new Grand Arena Championships format requiring eight teams on defense instead of seven, I'm really standing on a razor's edge. I really only have about eight teams on offense right now, so if I fail even one and I'm not able to finish at least a couple of the characters in that squad, it's going to be a very difficult thing for me to full clear my opponent. And I have to assume that my opponent is going to be able to full clear me because... I don't really have a stellar defense. We'll talk more about defensive strategies and offensive strategies later, but you have to realize that with the new feats and with all of the different banners at stake, if we're trying to max out our score and get to the top, be in Kyber League, be the best player in the whole world, or at least pretend like we are, we need every banner possible. So. Being able to full clear our opponents is going to start being a priority over other valid strategies that we've used in the past that pack with packing defenses. Phoenix in the back, along with Night Sisters, shouldn't really be a problem. We already know that Bosk and KRU are the other remaining teams, and we still have a lot of strong teams remaining. So we're going to use Jedi Revan to fight Night Sisters. That's not really his ideal matchup, not because he can't win it, but because he's usually best if used against a different, more difficult team. Generally speaking, we want to target old Daka as soon as we can. She's the linchpin for this squad in a lot of ways. With all of the different revives available to her, she can really make things difficult and extend a fight if you're not careful. If we can remove Daka entirely, the rest of the Night Sisters, while still potent, are really going to lose a lot of what makes them special. They don't have any more revives after this, except in the rare occasion that Talzin is able to kill someone with her special. And otherwise, the zombie taunting is usually not quite annoying enough to stop you from being able to just do what you need to do against them. That said, Talzin is almost always the second target to kill, because she is the other one who can revive. At this point, you'll notice that some of my characters are below full health and below full protection. I need to start really focusing on getting those banners up. After my struggle against Old Republic previously, I need to make sure I make all the banners possible. So, if we can kill Asajj, now, we can just use Zombie as a kill toy for a while, while we regenerate all of our health and protection. Night Sisters are a really difficult team to get full points against, just because they can hit your health and protection, and you have to re be able to regenerate both at a pretty high level. They also do a lot of damage, so it's not just superficial things you have to heal. You need a dedicated healer to be able to do a lot of that. The good news for us is that Jolie is one of the best healers in the game. Now, that was a mistake on my end. I was trying to stun Spirit so that I could just continue to pummel Zombie while I tried to heal myself. However, 59 banners is good enough. If I can't win after only getting 59 banners, then my mistakes with Bounty Hunters are probably going to be the definitive reason I lost anyways. My remaining offensive teams include Padme, KRU First Order, and Jedi Training Ray. All of those teams have play 
into each of the remaining teams. I just need to determine which team is going to be the most efficient into who. Looking at the speed of the first order officer is a lot of times important because that's the fastest guy on their team. Using Jedi Training Ray almost always just means I go first just because of the bonus turn meter that BB-8 gets from being with R2 and Jedi Training Ray. You'll see that I go out of my way to disrupt this team. Being able to stun people, daze them, and generally just slow them down is such an important part of being able to get the most of your banners against a team like this with a team that's as squishy as Training Ray's is. You want to put the smoke on BB-8 because he doesn't attack, and then you can attack with impunity without fear of being counterattacked because you're in stealth for, for the rest of the team. BB-8, if he's hit, is going to not only counter, but he'll call someone else to counter as well. Getting full banners against this team is going to be the priority right now. In a minute, you'll notice determining kill order against first order is sometimes more complex than you originally realize. I almost always kill First Order Officer first if he's available. His cleanse, his turn meter gain for the team, his ability to reduce cooldowns on the entire team is just too powerful. It's just a no-brainer because of how easy it is to kill him. After that, it gets a little more complex. I know a lot of people like to kill First Order Executioner first, and, I mean, it is advisable to kill him as quickly, quickly as possible, However, he only gets one attack at a time, and if you're properly stealthed, he's going to miss because BB-8 has foresight on him. First Order Stormtrooper has a counter, which will knock your protection down and potentially cost you banners. I typically try to kill First Order Stormtrooper first before he can damage my banner score. I target him while I'm still in stealth, so he can't counter. After that, it's just kind of cleanup. Kill First Order Executioner, then the two Kylos, in whatever order you see fit. If you watched any of my videos from the last season of Grand Arena, you'll know that my favorite Bosk counter is using First Order. If you can get the stun off on Bosk right away before he actually taunts, you can really just shut the team down right away and get max points almost every time. You can see here, I got the stun off, and now... We just start the turn meter train. Bounty Hunters don't have anything that clears that cleanse, and it's an automatic, guaranteed, two-turn stun on Bosk. He'll eventually come out of that, but with the amount of turn meter we gain, a lot of times we can actually apply the stun before Bosk even comes out of stun in the first place. This is a really confusing Bounty Hunter team. It features a lot of the Bounty Hunters that I really like, like Cad and Embo. I even like Greedo to some degree, though he's really squishy. However, there's no Boba and there's no Django. Those two are arguably the best bounty hunters in the game. I mean, really, Bosk and Dengar could also be argued to be the best bounty hunters in the game, but the fact remains, this team really should have at least Boba on it, and probably Django. I don't actually know if the, my opponent had them geared or what, I assume that they're designed for some kind of full offensive bounty hunter B squad or something, but I can't imagine taking Boba away from Bosk is really going to be a winning move in the long run. As we continue through this match, you'll see that Bosk has only been stunned this entire match. He hasn't done anything, which is great. It takes a while to chew through him, and with his second Zeta, it really can mess with your ability to uh, get to the rest of their team if he can get his taunt off. However, looking at mods before you attack is also really important. KRU generally has the advantage because First Order Officer can be made to be really fast, and if you can get him to have the first turn, he can just give first turn to KRU, who then stuns Bosk and finishes the fight. This one, I'm just trying to hold off a little longer, trying to make sure I have full banners that I've healed all the way. Grabbing full banners against this squad is always so satisfying because I see it in almost every single Grand Arena matchup. 
An automatic 60 banners is a wonderful thing in competitive play, especially when you're facing the kind of opponents that I typically get to face at the 4.8 million GP level. And now we're going to look at a little thing called Overkill. The Phoenix Squad has all the Zetas, or at least most of them. They don't have Chopper, but that's okay. My Padme Squad has all of the Zetas, and they have a lot of speed, a lot of health, and a lot of rules mechanics that, frankly, Phoenix can't really keep up with. One of the things you'll notice with the, in this matchup is every time one of the Phoenix counters, it actually heals our characters because they're making out-of-turn attacks. That healing, in turn, gives us more stacks of courage, which ups our damage by an enormous amount. You see Ezra in one mass assist, even at 50% damage from GK and all of his assists, went down really fast. Padme was able to kick Kanan from full health and protection with just herself. She booted him, and the rest of them could have assisted, but didn't need to. When it's only Hera and Zeb remaining, you know you're probably sunk. All of this bashing I'm doing on Phoenix isn't to say that they're actually a bad squad. In the right context, they can be extremely powerful. I'm actually looking into trying to put some Zetas on my own squad, just so I can have a viable extra team on offense. And now you see that we got a full clear with zero fails. However, we did miss out on quite a few banners. I would have liked to have gotten a score over 1900. My opponent has a lot of teams remaining for offense, so I guess we'll just have to see how they manage to do on the attack. I hate it when you log in and see that all of your teams have been full cleared. You can see the score though, they obviously missed a few of the attacks. Seems like all of the teams that are good that I left on defense were not able to get defenses. But Grand Arena is a lot of times about calculating risk and determining what team can exactly beat another team without overspending, so to speak. You can always beat one of these teams with Jedi Revan, but you can only beat one of them with Jedi Revan. I have to wonder how Palpatine got six defenses, where my Knight Sisters got zero. I really wish they would tell us what teams our opponents used to beat which of our teams. Alright folks, I think we're going to wrap it up here. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the finals, which will be up in a couple days. And remember that in all things, Zareth prevails.